sometimes I look at myself and say, what if at my retaliation something happened? Because what we want push you to can do want to very open to increase your hour shown. Yeah. Are you aware of it? Just by you pushing them, that time it's that's a form of violence by you pushing them by you. Oh, want to act cool like a And there was what to want Hey family, a quick one. If you're watching this, it means you are enjoying this conversation and this exciting episode that I'm having with my guest. But something exciting, if you want to have me come to your private event or your corporate event, you can book me to be an MC or a speaker at your event by looking at the details on the screen or the details in the description box. Anyway, let's continue with the episode. Uh, you were speaking about what you, you feel bad for these kids. Um, kids referring to slay queens why do you feel bad for them i i think my biggest concern is that um you you don't understand that you have so much more mm -hmm. to offer to the world you know there is so much that you can accomplish as a woman women have gone through so much to be liberated and to also, you know, to be liberated even sexually, but not in that manner of recklessness. I hear you. You know, not in that manner of... Because with each and every freedom comes a certain responsibility. Sure. You know, you can be all free, in, in, but there's a certain responsibility, certain accountability that you need to have. And when you do these things at a young age, you forget that... You're in the moment and everything that you have planted in your 20s mm. comes back to you, mm. you know. So by the time you're trying to say, no, I've learned, like it's, we're all just like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you feeling like all these ladies now, I see the ones, especially those that are in their 30s, um, mm. who now say I've learned, I've changed. Does it seem inauthentic? For me, um, it's, I always say to myself, what were you expecting? Sure. Like, at what point did you think in your right head that this is going to work out forever, you know? Don't you have someone who could have whispered to you and said, but I need a glass day, you know? And, and also, for me, when you have recovered, take accountability because I've got a problem with people that say, I have, I am not better, you know? In But they don't want to take accountability of those years to say, actually, you messed up, you know? Instead of you just saying, yeah, now I've learned. And don't seek sympathy and empathy. Take accountability. And when you're saying from, when you speak about it, speak about it from a point of healing. Mm -hmm. Are the young people all making a point of not necessarily healing, but awareness. Okay. That is very blunt. Well, good, it's not all roses and Porsches in this life. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Yeah. It's not. Like I've seen people saying, I get so much every month from this man in and I'm like, do you understand what do they have to do to be in that position? Sure. I know. Would you welcome <laughs> to engineer your life? <laughs> you know, oh, fantastic. God there just like hey Gita was a man. You look so great, um, and thank you for honoring the invite. Thank you. Um, you uh, since we're already speaking about taking accountability, do you believe you've been cancelled? I think I, because I lost so much, I think cancel culture, when you speak of being canceled is when you start losing work, Oof. you know, because if you're not losing work, then you're not being canceled. I was canceled, you know, on mainstream media, but I was able to function with everything else behind the scenes because I am not just a public figure or a famous celebrity that's just witty. When you switch off the lights, there's nothing that happens to me. I still work when the lights are off. Sure. And that kept me afloat. But was the money as big as mainstream? Mm. No, it wasn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So fundamentally, you would say you were cancelled because it's, it's, it's mainstream cancellation at it's, least. It, 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 it was, it was. And I think the whole point of being cancelled, for me, um, I knew 
what you were, you know state was like GBV. Mm-hmm. It's a big thing. It's it's a pandemic in the whole world. So it's South Africa, you know, um, and for the fact that nobody's willing to really listen, it makes it even harder for you to understand mm-hmm. that you know when something is GBH. All of a sudden now it's called GBV and it's easy. One thing that I picked up about the whole situation is that it's so easy for women to take the GBV card because they think that gender-based violence is straight woman violence and it's not. Because for most, I know a lot of lesbians, a lot of queer people that go through so much gender-based violence because, and they can't really voice out because you're a minority. But when a woman says it, a heterosexual woman automatically people will take that side because of what women have been through. Yeah? Yeah. Is it not fair, though, considering that historically it is heterosexual women who have been harmed? Yes, but then they should have said women-based violence. I hear you. Do you understand? Because men have been harmed so badly. As well. As well. And they've never even had to speak about it. And when you look at the root of gender-based violence of why do men act out that way you'd realize it's also coming from being hurt from by by a woman growing up do you understand so it's it's the reason why i think also when they say gender was to say that men can also speak up. i hear you I hear do you understand you. but when a man speaks up it's like you're making excuses so sure, you sure. know you're a coward you're, you're weak. Coward, yeah, weak you know or you don't want to take accountability and when you fight back as a man, because you are stronger, you know, it's, it becomes an ability to know, but as a man, then learn, learn to walk away. A man's responsibility is for them to always be the bigger person. Hey guys, if you've been an OG subscriber, you'll remember the days I only had that low quality equipment and how much that equipment compromised the quality of a podcast episodes. The footage was shaky sometimes, the sound was really bad, and it really hurt me when you guys would notice that because all I had was a dream to create life-changing conversations, but I didn't have the funds to realize my dream. You don't have to be like me though. I recently learned of heartwarming stories where other side hustlers like me have used a Capfin loan to expand and elevate the quality of their products and services. So basically what Capfin does is that it makes securing your dream a reality. Had I had a Capfin loan back then when I started, man oh man, I would be much, much further than where I am today. You can use your Capfin loan to buy state-of-the-art equipment, you can use your Capfin loan to get new staff, which in turn allows you to have more time and resources to keep your side hustle thriving while you focus on your main work. In the description box below, you will find a link that details how a Capfin loan will help you elevate your side hustle. Is it, is it worth it though to ever fight back reflecting? Let me tell you, the way I always say, do you know things happen around me and I don't retaliate? Yeah. It it gave birth to, because I'll be honest with you, I've got a bad temper. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I knew, because I take time to retaliate. I'm one of those people who, I'm a delayed, my, my responses are delayed. And when they're delayed, it's, you know, my bomb. Yeah. Is it, I, like I totally, I, I totally black out and I had to work on that. Do you say in that, in the, in the particular in, uh, instances, because we are reflecting mm-hmm. now on whether uh, retaliating, retaliating is worth it. It's, it's not, you know, it's more so cool. Like my friends and I were talking about this, you know, what's on the thing? I was like, Shia, you know, I was like, I used to use that word a lot. Okay. I was like, yeah. Now you hear me say that. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, can't. Yeah. I'm just like you are not worth it. Sure, that's the thing. Because once you go through it, you're like that person was not worth it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had an altercation with um, a female friend of mine who was very rude, you know. And you know, I looked at her and I just like shame, man. That's what. That's the only thing that I could say to was just like shame. You you operating from a place of pain, and that's all. Yes, you... and, and I'm just like shame. Yeah, yeah. Man, like it's so sad for you to even operate like that. You know, it's 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 a sad way. And I've seen that. You know, people would people will push you. And to be honest, not defending violence or anything. We're only human. I hear you. You you are only human. You can be 
umfundi so se sontwe ni otanda zayo u archbishop badman who's born so clap moment because you just like yay yeah, you know mm -hmm. but but you you only human and we learn from our mistakes that's the thing if you don't learn from them now it becomes a habit and which means you've got a character problem so when you learn from them and when you when you when you when you went through the consequences i'm glad that happened to me that the consequences really shaped me to be a different person were they harsh it was most of them were undeserving okay because people don't know the full story and yeah. today i'm not willing to talk about it yeah i said you know what because every time when i say it, it's more of you're trying to paint someone else black you know i'd rather have the witnesses that were there even with certain shows that have called me, I'm like, I'm not going to do that interview alone. Mm -hmm. I want people that were there that were present to speak up because if it comes from me, it's like, yeah, whatever. But when you hear what everybody has to say, then you're just like, oh, you know? So for me, it, it, it was undeserving and I felt like I was collateral damage. There's people that were deserving of that punishment who are not getting it, you know? So because GPV is the biggest thing in South Africa and men are supposed to be punished for abusing women and now the the person to punish is this one he's also a man and he's a public figure mm -hmm. and he appears to be quite influential and quite popular and famous so let's 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 make an example out of him and that's why i felt like some of the things were totally undeserving but it was lessons that i feel like i had to go through to yeah. become the man that i am today but do you take accountability that although you are not willing to share the details of what exactly happened, who did what, where, mm -hmm. are you willing to take accountability that in a story that involved two people or more, you are a figure in it? Yes. And that is an influential figure. Amen. And as an influential figure, you are not ever supposed to retaliate or throw the first punch. Let me tell you, I take full accountability in terms of... Um, just being, don't be violent. In life, it's In life, never worth it. It's never worth it. Yeah. Like, I've seen, and it's so easy, man. And I hope everyone's watching this. Like, it's so easy. Because sometimes I look at myself and say, what if at my retaliation something happened? Because what we want to push you to come to want to very open to increase your hour, Sean. Yeah. Are you aware of it? Just by you pushing them. That time, it's, that's the form of violence by you pushing them, by you. And there was what to Wombulel. And that time, that person was still going to die. Anyway. <laughs> but because now you now become collateral damage because of true. your actions. Do you true, understand? True. So that's how I look at it. Witty. You don't have to do it. You know, you'd rather bite your tongue, luma sponge, lumin zimbi, walk away. Take a smoke. <laughs> and let me tell you, when you walk away, ne? When you look back, you're like, it was really not worth it. It was not that big. It was not that... Like, like, yeah, I can't, I can't sign them unless it was not that deep. Mm. Have you apologized? Um, to the people you believe deserve an apology? For yes, you? I did. And I think I did like a proper statement. And I think, um, most of all, I think I, I owed it to my, to my fans, to my family, you know, uh, to say that behavior was as unbecoming as, as in, it's very unbecoming and it's um it's things that i would like to teach other people you know say the power of walking away you know as you need to stand and fight you know but i'm not saying like fighting physically we're fighting for your career you know you're fighting for employment you're fighting you know for your rights you know there's wars that are worth the energy for you to sit down and strategize strategic it's fights tr strategic fights yeah. you know but there's fights that as a as a as a samacho alien mm. guys it, so you're binding i mean i went to sun city for freaking seven days and all sitting there i'm like really is this worth it <laughs> Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. That could have been a bigger person. Whether highly and also being intoxicated. While you're intoxicated, nobody thinks straight. Mm. You know, Uchala, we it's it also opens other spiritual doorways. That's why people when they're drunk the fight will start because your consciousness is not woke. You know, your reasoning capacity is not there. You know, it's like people that drink and drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, then you're in an accident, you're just like the Uber was seventy bucks. <laughs> 
Even if it's 300. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's still your life. It's still your life. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's other people's lives that yeah. involve. Which, but this could, could have been easily avoided. Or I could have sat and sobered up and slept in the car, you know, and became a better citizen. So it's those things we live and we learn, man. I don't believe that what happened to me was, was, was meant to kill me because I could have died. It was meant to make me a better person and to make me, um, to speak from a point of empathy than a point of anger. The type of person that you are, uh, the, the, the few minutes we've spent here before we, we, we started coming on set, you seem like a nice person who's outgoing, right? Um, and as a nice person who's outgoing, it means that's the energy you give off to people. Mm -hmm. And what you're trying to explain to me comes as you, you, it's a moment that you regret that wasn't worth it, that involved a bit of violence, but you feel like the grace that was extended to other people wasn't extended to you because especially by the people who were in the room, as you're saying, you won't do interviews unless other people will be there mm. because you want everybody to be honest about what happened, what right? It is. Do you feel betrayed by many people who were there? No, I, I mean, I spoke to them. We all know what happened. And, um, uh, and they were, they kept on saying, we want to speak on your behalf. Even when we tweet, nobody's listening. Oof. Even when we try to say this, nobody really listens to us. So when you want us at any platform to come and talk about this, and then we'll come through. And then I was like, I don't want to go through this as if it's a smear campaign. Against, against the other party. And the other party, because now it's like, I hear you're you. trying to, I'm just like, you know what, it's lessons learned. I'm okay. I mean, when, when she dropped the charges, because I didn't ask her to drop the charges, I didn't ask for that. You know, we, we got each other and I was just like, listen, I'm cool, I'm cool. You're cool. She's Where were cool. they dropped? Um, in June last year. June last year? Mm -hmm. How do charges get dropped? Maybe another person doesn't understand what it means when a charge is dropped. So charges get dropped. They were dropped the, when the trial was supposed to start because I never pleaded okay. guilty. Okay. I, uh, the, the, the timing course, the junior, the big, I was just like, I can't just go down without any of us taking accountability. You know, so I wanted trial. I wanted it to go. Let's air it out. Let's air it out. You know? which, would have, which would have meant media. Would have meant media as well. Would have meant so many things happening. But because already when you fight, because already I had nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Gong Tati. Gong Tati was everything. everything. Yeah. Let's go for it. Let's, let's take it there. Yeah. It was more, of course, I got nothing more to try and hold on to. Everything is gone. And on the day of the trial, when it started, then that's when the charges were dropped. How do you still say you're glad that you learned that lesson when you lost everything, Buji? It's not nice to lose everything. Let me tell you, I think it put me in a place of spirituality that I've neglected for the longest time. Sure. There's a humility that having nothing gives Having you nothing, because you must understand, Oti, um, I've never really grieved any loss in terms of work. Oof. I've never really... I mean, when the contract ends here, I mean, I move. There's the next one. There's the next one. And I can be unemployed for six months, but I'll still get gigs on the side that pay very well. So um, even if I'm broke, my broke is not, you know, my broke is in fact, I do not have cash flow as much as I want. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's... And for the first time, you For the first nothing. time, I had... I didn't, even when I tried to move next door, next door being value. Mm -hmm. A simple place like people that used to ask you for, for any favor. Can you do something for me? I only have 10K. Mm -hmm. Please do it for me. I just, that's my budget. To when you go back to them, you're like, remember you once asked for that favor. They're like, nah, I swear I can't touch you. <laughs> and you, so now you're going back to those people that were asking for those favors. People that and even them they've shut the doors. Nah, well, no more to know. Listen, okay, let's do it for a certain amount. No, I can't be associated with associated you. with you. You know, and that's when I knew Wuti. I've been humbled, and I didn't try to act as if everything is okay. I there was a moment where I wanted it to end so quickly. You know, I wanted to to I wanted to. I wanted to heal now, you know, to, to get back. And 
the more I tried, the more I was breaking. The more I was breaking, the more... I, there was a time I was at a club. You know when you're trying to have a good time? And I was just sitting there and I just burst into tears. <laughs> and my friends were like, we've been waiting for this moment. No. We've been waiting for you to... Like... What about anything that you know what to like more pamos? Yes. I just cried. I cried and I remember the bouncer's like, what do what, what did they do to him? What did they let me just leave him? And went to the car and I just kept on crying. I just cried. I cried a cry of release. It was a cry of grief. Yeah. From that point I never stopped crying. You grieved your you grieved your career. I grieved I, I grieved myself. I buried myself. Sure. I buried my habits. I buried the things that I used to normalize that were not supposed to be normalized. I had a whole I washed my funeral. I watched my own tombstone and I said to myself, You're watching it online on social media. Not even. Mm -hmm. it's, it's literally playing. I'm it's me now talking to myself. Okay. I said, Pilil, it's, so it is done. It's done. It's, it's all gone. Um, what do we do? How do we move forward? This person was amazing. This person did well, but he's no longer here. We can just embrace his legacy. Huh. We can just embrace the work that he did. We can just we can just embrace the memories of the people that he touched. But right now, he's no more. Big Star Johnson, when he was on that seat, said to me that he takes accountability that when he was down and out, he couldn't reach out to anyone because when he was at his prime, he wasn't a good person. He wasn't nice to people. He wasn't helping people. So he's actually not angry at anyone because he can't ask from people whom you didn't help when you were in your pride. Mm. Do you believe that there are people who should have been there for you who weren't there for you when you were down and out? Let me tell you, funny enough, you know, because I'm, I'm a nice person <laughs> and um, I was well protected. And I, I wouldn't lie to you. Sure. Yes, there were, there were people that turned their back on me. But it was okay because looking at how much I've lost, losing five people is nothing. Like, hambani, <laughs> man, leave. But my friends, man, my friends, you know, it's very few people. Even those who helped me and went to gossip about it, I don't care. Thank you for helping me because I needed you at that time. And they came through. They came through my family. Oh, man. Like it was, as I don't really bad, sure. you know, because when I left where I was staying, I was staying in a very nice, you know, golf estate to where I was, my friends and I used to, we stand in Kwarama complex on a face break. So it's your show me. Now how do you do that? How do you go on a very good face breaking? You know, we used to make such jokes. Yeah, yeah. And now where I stay, everyone was like, listen, you still have a nice apartment. And I'm just like, do you know I used to tease <laughs> these types of apartments? And look at me now. Yeah. And and but the level of, of that humility is that I accepted what was happening. I didn't try to fight it. Because when you fight situations because you're in a public you're in a, you're a public figure and you wanna prove a point, you you hurt yourself even more. I didn't want to act as if life is fabulous. I I was already at RB and Soul DJ. I only had one place that was willing to book me. And that's a place which is called Soul Cafe. I still play there every Sunday. Uh, I'm an Arabian soul DJ, so I started my own Sunday soul sessions there. True. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yes, they did suspend me as well. You know, to say we can't, we are even scared for you. That to be you, here. That you can be here, it's fine. But anyone can do something to you. And we don't want to put you in that position. So... Take a step back, stay at home. That time, I mean, I'm full of poma, you know? And then they said, you're hurting yourself even more. Huh. And I did. I took a step back. And when it was time for me to go back, um, what it, happens in the step back? Because a lot of people will say, 
uh, I took a hiatus meanwhile they weren't doing the work mm -hmm. they weren't doing the inner work they weren't doing the spiritual work and they come back still bleeding back into the industry uh -huh. I mean I want to always when I say to you look I'm going to say you're looking at a new person yeah I took the step back I started praying hmm. but now my prayers were full of anger my prayers were not pure-hearted my prayers were full of vengeance my prayers were conniving. My prayers were just boob tagat. Mm. You know, when when you're now starting to be in a position, instead of healing yourself, you are trying to find ways to kill and destroy the other party. You know, and you you're busy conniving and you're praying. And when I went for therapy, they said to me, "You're very angry." Mm. They said, "You are you you are very you are very very angry. You need to." start healing. And then I stopped blaming everyone. I looked at myself. Then I said, we do have a problem. You do have a bad temper. Yes, it comes once in a while, but when it comes, it's, it's a bomb. You need to work on that. And then I started doing that. I started praying. I started fasting. And God became at the center. The center of my life. You and I want to tell you, go to Benga. I saw I didn't go to church. I was invited to a lot of churches. I was. In, I used to sit on YouTube, watch, you know, pastors preach. You know, uh, the likes of T.D. Jakes. I, I watch. You know, I'll go back to Sarah Jakes. You know, I'll, I'll go back to watching in, motivational interviews like well, Oprah Winfrey masterclass. You know, I would sit, and I realized that. I am on a journey mm. that is so uncomfortable and I need to embrace this. And I said, you have nothing now. What do we do? You've got so cafe every Sunday. Does it cover rent? We'll be able to cover rent, yes. What do we do with food? Oh no, I've got my sister. I've got my buddies. I've got, and the self-healing and the things that most of my friends are even away of how much I'm healing. Only last week, one of my friends said to me, you have changed as you have changed as you shocked me all the time because you were the first one to call people out you were the first one to i know you when someone does something you look at them and you're like but in and then and then i just he says it's it's like you're a brand new person but mm. I, I sometimes i cringe i'm like oh, I'm not here. yeah yeah <laughs> it's because i buried those habits in order for me to transcend, to, to go to another transition, another dimension. dimension of my life, I can't carry that person with me. I can't carry that bougie with me. Yes, the bougie is a legacy. Bougie will forever continue. I am still bougie. But there's certain things that I had to cut out of my life, you know, and say now, that bougie junior, thank you. Now let's Timbinkosi take over. Yeah. And I had to put it like that so that I fully understand with myself, Guti, Aksafan. Even with relationships, I stopped dating for a year. Was Bougie a character that you can no longer relate to and you're like, whew, that person was a I, lot. Bougie was a character that made me become the person that I am. And everybody thought he's loud, he's, you know, all over, the, like, oh, oh, like all over the place, you know, he is bubbly, is this. And not knowing that there's a young man out there who's, who just wants silence. And peace. And peace. Stability. I, I said to me, and, and you must know when everything was gone and, you know, I'm like every article that I read about myself was bad. When I go on Google, it's my picture and her picture, you know, it's no longer bougie because they want to watch what, what, it's now this negativity. Every time I'll go on Google, I'll be like, hold on this page. I'm just like, really? Yeah. You know, and, and that, and that really did hurt. Say, this is now, this is your whole, oh, your hard work. It's now referred to this situation. Reduced to a moment. Reduced to that. Reduced everything you've ever done. Your sweat, your tears, your blood, your, your liberation for the queer culture, your, is now reduced to just that. And what hurt me the most also was the rejection that I received from the LGBTQI. I couldn't believe it. And funny enough, there's so many gay men who have been abused by women? Who would tell you the story or what you know? And so I sometimes gays will be like, I stand Claremont Tombazan. You know, because it's being 
you you more of a handbag and you're not really a person and when you t retaliate then you're a man all of a sudden you know and most homophobia that comes from females people don't know that i've, all, I've said this before and i'm going to say it on the record that females are the most homophobic as much as we can say men are homophobic, men are in, in. Men are only homophobic when they get caught the fact that they're in love with another man. That's why sometimes they end up killing the other gay guy. But in most cases, women, their homophobia is hidden by, hi, Tommy, in, in. Huh. But deep down inside, there is that. And when that happened to me, when the queer community, some of them and some of the bookings stopped from doing LGBTQI events, you know, no, we can't embrace an abuser. I'm not an abuser. You know, I'm like, but I've never abused anyone from... Did you feel that they owed you any, at least an opportunity to explain because they're queer? I would have loved for them to have a conversation. With you? With me. Yeah. I remember when uh, my friend Phil was trying to get me a gig at Gay Pride. This is in 2021. This is the commercial Gay Pride. This is the commercial. The join is October. Yeah. In October. Do you know the response that we got from the head of the Johannesburg Pride? She said, I've been trying to get Puji to do Pride and he's been too busy all these years. Now that his career is damaged, <laughs> he wants us to help him. Unfortunately, we don't want him. And uh, anyway, I'm even scared that he might hit me with a bottle when he comes to the show. This is a whole person who runs Johannesburg Gay Pride. A corporate. A corporate, like this is someone who knows what queer people go through. She could have easily just said, unfortunately not now with what's surrounding him or what's happening in his life. Let's see some other time. Like I, that response for me to be that detailed, to be that mean. I'm so disappointed at that lady till today to say, for someone that runs the whole Tropic Pride, I mean, Pride, Johannesburg Pride is all Africa. You know, people fly in. And I resented Pride from then. I, re I resented everything that I had to do with the LGBTQI community because I knew, Wuti, there's no unity here. But remember, Puji, people's identities are different. You may be queer first before you are a man. Maybe she's a woman first before she is queer if she's queer we're not sure no right? but but if she's a woman first she relates with the story the narrative that the woman was the victim and because that's the narrative that's in the media you can't blame people Buji, for believing that narrative furthermore you've gone on record to say you can't explain what happened for whatever reasons you you're not explaining what happened it's never going to be explained so if there is a narrative an overwhelming narrative that a woman was harmed the woman will side with the woman. So maybe you should look at that side that that's how she took it and give her some grace. No, I will. I, unfortunately, I'm not going to do that um, because if that came from a woman's perspective, like I'm saying, there were words that were used there that saying, even last time we called Bougie. So it was not a matter of we can't, it was more, it was, it was a personal attack. Payback. It was a payback. Yeah, a good thing. Bougie. So it's not a good always too busy. It was always too busy. And, and to be honest, the reason why, you must understand when Pride happens at that time, when I was at Metro, any Metro film DJ gets booked very hectically. And there was a time I was like, listen, I'm willing to do Pride, but let's look at the payments. How, how are we getting paid? Not everybody's volunteering. Why do we have, what? we have people volunteering at a gig whereby, uh, uh, highly someone, sponsored. Yeah, highly sponsored. And then someone who's, who's an ally performs and they get paid. And then you've got 20 queer people who can literally fill up the whole stadium, who are extremely talented, that you can help and really grow their career. Do you understand? So that's where I was coming from. And I was just hurt to the whole response, how it was so personal. Yeah. You know? And I decided that, you know what, I'm not going to do Pride anymore. But funny enough, last year, because of healing, mm -hmm. I went to Pride. Last year. Yeah. In years, I went to Pride. I was not trying to look for, for any VIP. So you just attended it as a normal person? As a normal person. Mm -hmm. I had a full face beat on. I was wearing my rainbow colors. I had hair on. And I realized that, you know, as much as I can have beef with the, 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 the organizer, the head mm -hmm. of the organizer, mm -hmm. 
we are fighting things that are way bigger than that. And just to be surrounded by queer people that day felt so beautiful. And to see the people that are follow on TikTok as well, you know, we've contributed to the queer culture now. It is very exciting. Yeah. So I realize that it's, you know what, they can say whatever, but me, myself and I, I know what pride means to us. Are you happy with where queer culture is at the moment? Considering the fact that I know you said you buried that Buji, that younger mm -hmm. man who didn't necessarily make all the best decisions, but that man also made many good decisions that contribute to queer culture back then, especially in traditional media. That man stood for a gay man who wasn't confident enough to be themselves. You, you were representation at the highest level. And I know once again that you've buried that Buji, but right now, are you happy that that Buji contributed to where the game is right now? When I start worried that Bougie right, to be honest, it's just the character, you know, the things that witty that are happening, bad habits, like I said. Bad habits. You know, we buried the bad habits. The bad habits. The bad attributes, yeah. So I had an audition not so long ago, and I had to go back. So I wanted to watch Tula mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was my first TV show. Yeah. And I saw that young man, they, and I cried again because i was so proud of myself i'm like nigga come on <laughs> like look at yourself and when i did that audition i was that man that boy or kali five thousand it was so I, alive it was so and i realized that actually i've been burying myself for the longest time because of what people were saying for the longest time, I've been taking away from myself. I've been trying to hide myself because I got too scared. The light scared me at some point. Oof. The light really darkness scared me. Darkness became comfortable. The, the darkness became comfortable. Even if when I see people doing things, that's why I'm a big cheerleader. You know, I'm always like, rather you than me, <laughs> you know? And now, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just random. No, it's not. Uh, and, 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 and now when I look at myself, with what I've done there and the person that I am now, it's going to be a mess, guys, a beautiful mess. Yeah. A beautiful mess. That was genuine. There was, I look at myself and why were you so brave? Because I wanted to, because I've always been told, you can't, you can't, you can't. And I'm an Aquarius. Anyone who knows an Aquarius will tell you, Aquarius are rebels. Mm -hmm. You know, people will go right, will go left. When everybody was playing, when every DJ right now, when I started in 2017 being a DJ, 2018, I everybody was doing house. I'm a piano. I was doing house as well, but I didn't want to do house. And then they forced me to say you're gonna get bookings, which is I did get, but I was not really even that good, to be honest. And I was just like, and I always want to shims at things and let things take practice. And I'm just like, but at the same time, I don't like this music. I'm the one to dance at a club when you're playing R and B. I want, I love R&B and soul. And I want R&B and soul. And then they said to me, good luck getting bookings. I didn't care. I went for that because I'm that type of person. If it makes sense to me, and I, I know that I'm passionate about it, I will do it regardless of what you say, whether it's a yes or it's a no, Bougie will do it. Yeah, yeah. And that's the Bougie you saw from Kulasborn. From Kulasborn, even with the hair. Yeah. There was a time I cut my hair off, I went bald because I didn't want to be seen anymore. Huh. I went bald, I... This is during this whole case process. Before. That's why I get to the bearing of myself started way started before. before. Started way before. So yeah, yeah. by that time when the case happened, already, and I remember, I said to my sister, oh, finally, I can be normal again. <laughs> <laughs> when everything is done, I'm like, I'm, I can date without people expecting me to, like I can have a normal relationship, go through normal relationship struggles. W because without the celebrity burden. Without the celebrity burden, you know, a person to see me for who I am, you know. Not for the number of followers you have. Yes, it's or I remember, like, because every time someone would be like, why are you so quiet to my distract in your pap? You know when somebody that you're dating says that to you? Then you're like, but this is me. That is work. And when you fell in love with... The celebrity. The celebrity. The character. The character. Whew. Now this is me. Yeah. I am chilled. I read books. I'm a smart man. I write a lot. I think. I sing. I. So when the silence is now me and you, the person is no longer interested. 
Mara, if I say there's a kick, then they're jumping. Yeah, let's go. So we can sit at a table. Yes. And the table is full of people yes, and it's people. vibey. And it's vibey. And my friends are <sighs> so nice. And you think that's the life. But I am going through it. And I was saying to you, this is a journey, you know? Is dating as a celebrity, since we're there, just treacherous? It's horrific. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody who's, who's, who's famous who sat on that chair has said the same thing. It's horrific, man. You know, a person will say, no, I love you for who you are. It, bullshit. <laughs> you know very well who you, you know who, you, who you're dealing with. Yeah. You know, don't pretend as if, on toilet, you know. You know what's more villain, I'm going to You know, and you, and also in those relationships, you must understand that as a celebrity, when you date someone who's, who's normal, you start downplaying yourself to meet them. Oof. at their level. I've done that a lot. I've done that a lot to a point where I used to minimize the way I think. And, you know, sometimes when that, hey, we'll see too much. I'm about putting And then now, because, so you, you start changing everything that's how they met you in order to suit them, you know, to say, I don't want to be too bright for you. Now I can't do it anymore. I've stopped. The reason I stopped dating, I was like, I can't do this nonsense anymore. Mm, mm, mm. I can't compromise my way of living because okay, and I gonna mali, okay, I gonna mali Uber. I Uber almost everywhere I go. It's a normal life for me. If your life is not, if Uber is not normal to you, and Masngacho, let's not even try to do things. I don't save people anymore. I don't. I've learned with you. The more you compromise yourself to be in a relationship, the more you take away your happiness. I was talking to some other guy who was quoting me now. He said to me, so what do you think you can bring in a relationship? Yet, what do you mean, what do you think I can bring in a relationship? That's okay, let's put it like this. What do you want in a relationship? Yet, I want nothing. Yet, I've done so much work on myself that I'm in a position now that I'm able to love someone. And I just want to be in love. I just want to be in love. Yeah. And I just want to chill. I just want to have fun. I just want to do things. But let yeah, in, in, I am no longer there. Mm, mm, mm. I'm no longer there. I'm no longer, I'm not going to compromise. I've laid my standards by the river for the longest time. To a point where I'm very lost with what we should doing with this person. Because also because I didn't love myself enough. Sure. I didn't. I you Do know, you think that's why you compromised and dated people who were highly insecure to the point that you had to dim your light? Because you didn't love yourself enough to realize what... This is not an, a man, actually. Wabindota is a leader. Besides, it's, I did it because I felt like if I don't take this, who else is going to come for me? Oof. To understand? Yeah. So when because you, of the lack of love. Because of the lack of love. So when you say you love me, you know... You, because, <gasps> you love me? You love me? Yeah. Make it for real. Yeah. Oh, let's be together. Yeah. You know, I didn't see it from a point of growth, from a point of... You know, I just took anything that was able to give me that attention from a man's perspective, because also I'd never thought that was attractive. I never saw myself as handsome. The queer community doesn't consider people who look like you handsome. No. It has to come from deep within. And, and, and let's be honest about that. Now, 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 why do they have to do so much work in order for you to tell me that I'm beautiful? Like, it's so unless I stopped. You know? yeah. And you get these guys with, I mean, I've been body shamed, I've been fat shamed, I've been skin color shamed, feminine shamed, yeah. femininity, bottom shamed, you're too, fem too feminine, you're too feminine, like, to a point, the reason why I also gravitated more to heterosexual men is because they would have this narrative that they're going to treat you like a woman, and then now, when you date a gay guy, and then they realize it's actually you not. You know, and then you ask, so, I don't do those things. And I mean, I cook when I want to cook. I do my decisions as I go. But umundo to baba next thing when you're trying to play a role of a female, that time you're not female and you're not even trans for that matter. Yes, you're just a man who happens to be in love with other men. Yeah, that's why you find us more gravitating to more heterosexual men, especially because the queer guys will reject anything plus size. But in a heterosexual world, I stand a chance to date a straight man. Absolutely. Dominic Zagla said that to me mm. when, when they were sitting there. They mm. said that um, only if all these women who are homophobic in my comments knew that how many of their husbands are in my DM. 
So many. Because the heterosexual men have this uh, fixation or this desirability because you're bigger. Because women generally are bigger, so they associate this biggerness with being feminine and beautiful. And beautiful, yeah. and, 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 and we have that. And you know, for them, trust in me, they just see in the mm. I mean, they see um, on in chair. Like yeah. they're not even bothered by anything. Um, yeah. on in chair, eh? <laughs> in, in. And that's why I ended up. And also dating those type of men, you must know that they're not going to be there with you forever, because they can't come out as gay. But they're willing to keep you in closed doors. They're willing to sleep with you. Love you behind the scenes. Yes, love you behind the scenes. Oh my God, I'm sweating. Love you behind the scenes. Yes. Not... So, so like, like as you're saying, there's a desirability element with those guys, but they're, it's unsustainable because they can't fully love you. And at the end of the day, we all want to be loved loudly and proudly. That's why I also stopped with heterosexual men, you know, and just take a step back. And I know that I'm a lovely person. I think one thing that we need to understand is look at yourself and say, I'm a very, because I know that I'm a beautiful human being. I am not perfect, but trust me, I'm a beautiful human being. And I know I'm beautiful because I work to be beautiful. I want, when you think of me, I'm not going to be loyal. Yes. That's yes, what, that's yes, one thing that hurts me about the whole case, which now nobody says, no, Chaifa, is too little old dialect. Now, all of that is raised. And now there's just, now law all, Oh, it's in, in, you understand? And that hurts because, you know, deep down inside, I am a beautiful soul. Yeah, yeah. And I've worked on that. Is navigating love now that you've found the healing still completely difficult? Because as much as you can believe you're beautiful, but society, the system, makes other queer men still not see you as desirable as a muscle man with, I don't know, a six pack or whose broader shoulders are broader, or who has a deeper voice. Are yeah. you still struggling in that area of your life? Let me tell you, right? No. I, I'm having fun. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, on, I'm, on to, I'm back on online dating. The funniest thing, looks for me in a relationship mean nothing. Mm. And I've dated the hottest guys, and, and I'm not saying this for lip service. I've dated from broad shoulders to light complexion to hazel eyes to white men big like i've dated i jolile guys you understand to a point Yoguti, most of the biggest connections i've had with men was not because of their looks i was always turned on by the smart man someone who thinks someone who and i i just realized that it's an aquarian thing you know to all the aquarians out there hello so it's an aquarian thing with steaming when you Stimulate me mentally. Ah, oh, man, listen. No more among my crutches. Now you will change like Porsche, baby. Because I can work on certain things. If your looks come and go. You look like this. You didn't sit there and choose to look like this. Mm -hmm. When you go to the gym, you're doing it for you. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah. And yes, you look gorgeous, my baby. But now when the muscles are done, like when we're done touching and kissing and What's left? And, 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 and then exploring everything that in sure. Because Mina when Mina I mustn't close now see to I can't handle fluffy conversations. He conversation oh when when the muscles are gone, are you able to say, Baby, you're spending too much, let's save more? Things that are things that matter. Are you able to say things like that? No. You know? The problem is the entitlement of being hot and looking a certain way. So the entitlement, their corner of those people, and I'm not saying everyone, mm -hmm. but those type of men, the entitlement, especially if they're gonna date someone like me, would they think, oh Bush is a fave? Get compromised in compromise I'm zile. very beautiful. I'm very handsome. Yeah. But it was me. So push do what's right. You yeah. understand? We are keeping you know, slay queen mentality. Yeah, yeah. I want yeah. you keep him alone. I keep if you yeah. don't, I would know who's gonna who's gonna give me the money. So it's either you do it yeah. or you don't. Yeah. And you realize, um, Uguti, I mean, I, I have nothing to do with your looks. My best friend is very handsome. Other thing, I'm like, friend, you saw how you can get any man in I told him I never chose to look like this. And I'm like, you are very few in that department. People will say, I never chose. I the only thing I can work on is my brain. Mm -hmm you know, and my heart. And to be honest, I was also talking about, I said, I want to squash like it. I want to squash like it. Now my song is squash like it. The only thing is that you need to 
and fix your ways. Let me overshare a bit. It's it's not harder, I won't lie. I have pretty privilege. Mm -hmm. But it's more nuanced discerning who wants you for what. And that's something that I experienced most of my adult life, where people come towards me initially for physical attraction and how I appear. Mm -hmm. Because I do believe that I fit the mold of conventionally good looking, right? You do, and, and you then, have nice ties by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I have to then discern that's the nuance part. Mm -hmm. so what are these people here to do? So that friend of yours, I fully agree with them. It's like when somebody says, um, Lungelo, why don't you have a child? And I'm like, that's the lowest form of leaving a legacy because it only takes is one moment of pleasure and the child has manifested. Mm -hmm. Lungelo, the name, Lungelo, KM, the name, must be remembered for all the labor that he did that took time to build. With the conversation that I'm having on this podcast, people seeing how I think, falling in love with how I think, not falling in love with what they see when they're just scrolling on Instagram. Uh, uh, it's this beautiful, actually, you just know. <laughs> Look at what's on TV, guys. <laughs> and that's so beautiful. And, yeah. and, and one thing that, that I've always said, there's nothing wrong with looking good. And people shouldn't shame you for looking good. Yeah. Not, I can't shame someone for what to cook in Zimbo goes. Yeah. I mean, you know, in KB, so <laughs> everybody can go to the gym. We can't also shame people that look good. It's unfair. Yeah. It's unfair that now you look good, now you need to downplay. It's good for you to know, but don't be disrespectful to other people. Absolutely. And lack empathy, you Absolutely. know. And also when you have, you have your muscles, please to everyone that's going to the gym and looks hard, please work on their brain. Because sometimes we sit there and we struggle. Do you know we struggle? Like we struggle with also like one of my friends told me I'm not gonna look at my in a problem. Meeting at a yik into Sangana conversation wise in in I was saying to this other friend of mine, Naya, you wouldn't have been hot in in he now works at the gym. And a friend, you know what? I'm very grateful that you now have a job, you know, because also for so long you were relying on the looks. Yes, and also with those looks they couldn't really keep him because La Uto me na you understand. So I said to him, but my wish for my wish for you is for you to get a learnership. I want to see you getting a learnership because the body is done, my love. The looks are there. Young kid, my senior se gele le level, my senior se le. And there's and there's an age where even the looks are not so appealing because at 38, it's not like at 28. Because at 38, you're now trying to build stable, sustainable things, and the other 38 year olds are not really there for your looks, hey. We don't like. I mean, at the same time, the water you look. I, I'm like, yes, you look hot. Yeah. Yes, you've got. But what? My one can work out what I'm not selling. I'm not selling, guys. I suppose for me, the people are like, oh, chomu dog, chomu dog, chomu. But my one can remember selling it. Yeah. After a while, was it chomu? Ah, English. Ah. Yeah. So it's like, what about it? What about you know? Hey, don't talk about this overshare. Oh my God! I hope he doesn't kill me when he sees this. I met a guy, shakers, years back. Then I started dating. So we had a trip with my friends. So he's handsome, tall, gorgeous, you know. We're like, let's go on a trip. We're all going to know if it's going to be fun. We're taking with. So now conversations are happening. Now, I don't know what to do. baby, hey, love you, you know. Conversations are happening. And everything that he says, you know, in the, in the car, it's just like, huh? Go on, huh? To a point that I started laughing at him all trip. Imagine when I'm sitting in the front and it's my season move. Fucking car, what about big? So I could hear like my thing, and then my friend, I'm looking at my friend, I'm like, what have I done? And my friends are like, show me. Okay, to be fair, after this weekend, we all know this is not gonna work. Yeah, yeah, We're just yeah. gonna accommodate him, but we weekend. are exhausted. <laughs> we can't break through. I'm gonna next. Like, yeah, yeah. And, that, and that really hurts when. You're such an amazing, beautiful person. Mm. And being beautiful is a gift. Yeah, yeah. Being yeah. beautiful is a gift. So work on the other things. It's like being talented. Talent is not enough. Mm, mm, mm. I've learned that discipline is more, you know? Because one thing TikTok, one thing that TikTok has taught me, everyone can shine. Overnight. Overnight. <laughs> everyone can be a superstar. True. Everyone. It does, you don't have to be good looking, you don't have to be anyone go go over a star. Mm -hmm. But now, when you have to do the work of sustaining that, that's when you realize. That's why when people come into the industry, the newbies, when they come to the industry and they want to undermine us who've been in the industry longer, that really hurts me to say, do you understand what it took? 
we were not made from TikTok. It's lack of wisdom because you lack don't of, get it. Yeah, we were not made from TikTok. It's very few entertainers that transition from TikTok to TV and be on TV and sustain. The likes of Obama Shendiki and Meso, um, rest in peace, my But when you we look can at count them with one hand. In one hand. Yeah. What you, now, when you transition to TV space, my love, there are on a ring light. Mm -hmm. It's a full production. Mm -hmm. There's like you, 30 people on set. There's like 30 people on set. <laughs> and you and, have to perform and because you have to perform. So they get paid. Mm. So it's nice when you do your things in Lini. Yeah. We won, ones are in, in. But trust you me, the industry is beyond that. That's why anyone that makes it on TikTok was an influencer, when they have to break into the mainstream media, it's so hard and they fall apart and it breaks them because now I always say, don't lose the essence of how you started hmm. because it will always be your foundation. So when you have made it on this commercial, on this influencing jobs, nah, 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 always remember what made you the star. It was because of that content go back. Hmm. You know, walking it. Now they are losing the plot. Says the phone for my makeup in my week. Says hamba my party. Good, but ufiran janila. Even the but you were just funny. You were just funny. So go back to that content. Even Beyonce will tell you the reason I'm a star because I sing. Yes, you can do all these crazy things, but what's the core? We, we I am a musician, and that's what people need to learn. Seven goes to What would you like to be remembered for? Oh my. I would like to be remembered as a man who, even though you're looking at me, it's like waiting for me to say something deep and profound. <laughs> By the way, anything is profound if you're authentic. If you're authentic. Yeah. I would like to be remembered as a man who came and did it all. <laughs> I, I was saying to my sister when I was going through this case, I, the reason I was crying, I said to my sister, if I had to die now, I'll be the, the weak, like, I just lost the little snacks. Yeah. Because I'll be bitter. Yeah. I want to die so empty. That's why even when I do certain things, whether they see them, whether they don't, it's not for them. Like, I want to be so empty. It's not even funny. Like, I want to say, and I want to live with it. Even when I get married, I want to be in that marriage to win it, not to lose it. I'm Like, I want to die so empty. I want to be a man that came and did it all and gave it his all. The man that came and just gave his all. Temigosi Puji Pigua says he wants to depart this earth having given it his all. I hope you've seen the reason for this content that we did today because it was about Puji sharing his healing journey, sharing the pain, something that not many people share when they've gone through a situation that has been so publicized in a negative light. And I hope you're able to empathize that life is very gray, life is very nuanced, and you come to your own decision about Puji's situation and anything else that you might be going through where you will need this type of wisdom to apply. I'll see you in the next episode. Introducing the epitome of luxury living. Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. 
contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.